evening ladies and gentlemen. Today we are joined by the one and only Liam Jones. He is the owner and founder of OSA Overseas Apparel. Liam, how are you mate? I'm good mate. I'm very Great. good. Yourself? Yes, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's good. So today I've come down obviously to talk to you about your business bro. Um, cool. Let's get into it man. How did this even come about? Um, so I've always like been into fashion since yeah. day dot really but I guess in the school I wasn't taken seriously with it. It was more, you know, I liked a bit of art and yeah. that type of thing. And it was never really a career path that was shown to me to be self-employed, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Uh, well, you'll remember from school, like that no, one, no one really said, oh, yeah, you know, work for yourself. Like. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, did like GCSE art, A-level art, that type of thing. And then yeah. did foundation, which is just a one-year course where you get to do whatever you want for a year, really. Yeah. Um, and my brother used to work in size, so I was always like wanting to be that. like my brother yeah, and be into fashion. So I was always buying the new clothes, spending a lot of money on clothes. Yeah. So I was kind of, I knew a bit about fashion, nothing to do with like the distribution or production of, yeah, of just making. Yeah, nice brands and new Exactly, clothes, yeah. yeah. I, I liked buying clothes. I um, remember that. <laughs> and yeah, all my paper and money just went on like one t-shirt just mm. because I was like, oh, Stussy, sick, I'll buy it. Oh, yeah. And um, that practically just carried on until I wanted to give it a go myself. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I did foundation and they enable you to do an exhibition at the end for a week okay. on whatever you want. And um, I was like, well, it's, you get four months to prepare for it. And I was like, well, I may as well give it a go and yeah. do a brand out of it. So okay. uh, so, from, so from that, so from high school, let's just go mm. back into it a little bit. So from high school, you obviously said you did art. Um, yeah. In terms of like employment and everything else, what did you like want to do when you were back in uh, high school? Well, art and stuff, well, right? it was more, um, I was told to do okay. a, a certain things. So, yeah. um, my mum and dad, like they both work for the public sector. They both work for the council. So yeah. they, they've, they're in the generation where it's, you find a steady income, you stick with it until and you're the, good and content. That, exactly. Goods, yeah. And, um, that, that was boring to me. Yeah. I like, can imagine. Like, not like, you know, they, they love their jobs and, and yeah. whatever, like sound. But for me, it was more like, I like the risk and, I guess in school because people didn't necessarily take me seriously with what I had an interest in and yeah. when I said I want to do a clothing brand which is what I wanted to do really in, in the end game yeah. it was more oh that's a dream like oh what do you want to be in your old I want to be an astronaut yeah I want yeah. to have a clothing brand but yeah. I straight up wanted to have a clothing, clothing brand. brand not like oh yeah that could be fun mm -hmm. um, so I was actually I actually applied to do a PGCE in Cumbria yeah. and uh, what, what, why? Because, become a teacher yeah because oh my so okay. my parents like i remember it like it was yesterday my parents were like oh yeah so obviously you're gonna do teaching and that because you know you, you're good with kids like you do work experience yeah. than you and i went to my primary school i was that legit kid it was like i can't be asked to actually look for <laughs> what i have an interest yeah. in so i'll just, just go to my primary school, school because it was five seconds from my house yeah and like the teachers they were like oh you're really good with kids and that and you know primary schools don't have male teachers so yeah you, you get a job straight away and I was like, oh, sick, like, you know, steady income. They were enticing getting... you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, practically, like, being, not poached, but being like, you're good at it, you should do it. Do it, yeah. And um, and I was kind of not shown that it was, like, this way or the highway, but mm -hmm. my parents were obviously very supportive of being being a teacher because it's a, an easy, like, job to get into as of a course, male yeah, teacher yeah. at the time. Um, so, yeah, so I applied to do a PGCE, mm -hmm. and then... In six form, I was chatting to one of our old teachers, Miss Gapper, who's now yeah. Miss Jones, um, and she was like, "You need to do foundation, like just do art, and then just go from there. Like it's only a year; it's yeah. eight hundred pounds to the course, so you're, you're not good. losing a shred ton of money from yeah. just doing something that you're not going to want to do after that." Yeah. Um, so I, I, I went home, walked home from school, said to my mum and dad, "Oh, I'm going to do foundation art. I don't want to do teaching." Mm. And uh, how did take it? Uh, well, <laughs> so through school they were like, oh, you know, your class art, like you always get A's and that, A stars and stuff, and they were mega supportive. Yeah. When I said I wanted to do his career, they both just straight up said, "Are you even that good?" Ooh, and I was okay. like, I was like, okay, this is the start now of where I can kind of prove like I am that good. Yeah, like not even yourself. like to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm amazing. Like yeah. I'm not saying I'm, you know, the next like Monet or Picasso or whatever, but like it was what I had an interest in, and yeah. I guess that's the difference is I was willing to put the time in. And um, and just have that freedom, I guess. Like, yeah. we're teaching, you don't really have freedom. It's you, imagine, you take yeah. a box and then you go and take the next one, you know? Yeah. And I never really wanted to do that. So, yeah, at the start, they, they weren't the most supportive, but I think that made it better for me because now they're mega supportive and, and they, 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 they absolutely it. love it. Yeah, exactly. And I think because... Obviously, they were worried. Like parents, obviously, worry about that's their, how it their begins, kids. isn't it? Exactly, yeah, of course, man. and it's understandable. Like their their generation, self employment wasn't really a thing, except yeah. you were like a butcher, you know, where I'm. 
I'm not a butcher, so it's no. a completely different like lifestyle, you know? <laughs> yeah, of course. But, um, so, yeah, so at the start, it was a bit of like a... Uh, I saw it as a challenge to, yeah. to kind of make people notice that, you know, you don't actually have to do what everyone thinks is right for you. You can do what you feel is right for yourself. For yourself, indeed, um, yeah. That's and, why I like to practice and preach as well. Yeah, like, exactly. Get out there, do what you want to do for yourself. And I think that makes you a bit happier. Because oh, you actually get up in the morning yeah, thinking, exactly. you know what, this is for me. Well, when I was um, on my foundation course after sixth form, yeah. uh, I got a job for Scots Menswear, which is owned by JD Sports. Yeah, I remember you were there. And that. I yeah. was there for three years, and I was management them for a while, and mm. they offered me a VM job in Birmingham. Oh, and wow. said, like, like, fat money, to be yeah. fair. Like, it was good wage, company car, they paid for accommodation for the first year. And I nearly took it, because I was like, right, this is good money. But yeah. I, I was working 25 hours a week, and... I felt knackered all the time. I that. was so demoralised, and I, in school, like you remember, I wasn't the like in early years in the school. Yeah. I wasn't very loud. I was quite a quiet kid, quite no, anxious. You were quite in the early years. Yeah, and yeah. I was like a, a bit of bad anxiety and stuff like that, and um, that started to come back, and I didn't like really. What's that? What? It started coming back through work. Yeah, yeah, because I think I wasn't happy in myself. Of course, yeah. Um, I was being down all the time, and my, my partner noticed it. My yeah. parents noticed it. Blah 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 blah, and. This, I was still doing the brand on the side of working in Scots and, you know, it was really good sometimes, but when I was management, there was a lot more responsibilities yeah. and, and all that type of thing. And I couldn't switch off and, and that was kind of killing me, really. Um, getting to you a little bit. Exactly. So that's when I did, I chose to do a pop-up shop for three months in Cardiff City Centre yeah. um, just to see if I could kind of do it, really, and mm. to give it a go properly rather than say, oh, I'm going to start a brand and just be sat at home waiting sat for a sale yeah. to come through, you know? Of course. Um, did that for three months and absolutely loved it. Yeah, so you really went for it, like you thought. Yeah, to yourself, well, Let me just go I was still it. working in Scots at yeah. the time, so I was working seven days a week in the shop, working in Scots two nights a week, printing all the stock myself, that type oh, of yeah. thing. But I was more buzzing than I'd ever been, it's even though you were enjoying even, it, right? yeah, even though I was doing like practically twenty four eight type yeah. of thing, I was working every single day. Um, I absolutely loved it, so I was like, right, okay, obviously this is what I've got to do. So I just started to kind of wean off the hours and scots yeah. and starting to focus even more on the, the bits to go with the brand and myself as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They kind of came in tandem, you know, they worked together. Mm. So, um, and as I felt more kind of comfortable and confident with the brand, I think that came back through in me as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then, so that was, when did I do the pop I think it was 2017 I did it. Dece yeah, October to December 2017. Yeah. And then opened here then in April 2018. So wow. it was like four months after. I had four months to kind of prep to, to open up here. Yeah. And then, yeah, so the first year of being here, I still worked in Scots, just like mm -hmm. eight hours a week, just to, I still had personal money coming in rather yeah. than taking money from the business that I didn't need to. Uh, and then just sacked it off completely, just handed them a notice and was like, right, I'm going in. Took but, the plunge. But end of the day, I, I did it in a, a slow and kind of natural way rather yeah. than going, oh, I'm just going to quit my job and put all my money in and then if it goes wrong, it goes wrong, I'll yeah. put nothing to land back on. You just took time with it and you knew exactly. I've got yeah. a contingency plan just yeah, in case. 100%. Yeah, and, yeah, of course. And yeah, I've never looked back really. So when people say, oh, what was your plan with leaving Scots? Yeah. I always say like, oh, it's never to have to write my CV again. Because realistically, yeah. I should never have to write a CV again. No, now. you shouldn't. And Except if you for, do, then yeah, oh. obviously, yeah, it hasn't worked like. But, yeah, of course. <laughs> but um, that sh that shouldn't happen. Yeah. Hopefully, and I've noticed a hundred percent. You put the time in, you reap the rewards. And, yeah, for sure. Um, As we can see around here. Yeah, yeah like you know, Smashed it. I guess it's one of those things where you got to try it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I'm not the next Alan Sugar, but it's the thing of I'm I'm happy with what I'm doing. Well, you are, yeah, yeah. And, you know, if I was in it to make a quick buck, like, I would get my stuff printed in Taiwan and then sent over to me for a couple mm -hmm. of peas, you know, where instead I'm printing it myself, working nine till five, and then printing ten till whatever yeah. time in the morning. Um, craft, and, but, but I love it, you know? Yeah. I wouldn't want to do anything else. Of course, because you, know? you enjoy what you're doing. Right? Yeah, 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 and, like, it's, it's class. And the good thing is, with being here, mm. is... I get to meet new people every day. I get people that are like-minded coming in. Yeah. So it's offering more of a community space as well as like just another shop in town. Just coming here, everyone to vibe together. Ex exactly. That's why we've everything. got the sofa. That's why yeah. we've got this the books and stuff as well for people to chill out in. We've got table football and stuff like that. So then people yeah. know they can spend a bit of time just not feeling like they have to spend money every time they come in. You know? Yeah, they can just come in and chill. Yeah, yeah, I always wanted that when I was younger, like a shop to go into that I could feel like part of something rather than just, oh, I've got to buy a T-shirt now. I mean, yeah. you know, and especially with independence, like they're usually quieter than pre-mark and whatever. So you feel a bit, 
pressured to be like, oh, should I get something now? Now yeah. that it's just me and the staff member. Really. <laughs> and I'd never want my customers to feel You don't want like, it to feel like that, oh, no, of mate, course not. Nah, no chance. So I always make that clear. Yeah. And, you know, JD practically told me to do the opposite, is upsell, 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 where I usually, if someone's like, oh, I don't know which T-shirt to go for, if there's a price difference, so yeah. I usually tell them just, right, which one would you wear more? And yeah. if it's the cheaper one, happy days, they've saved a couple of quid, like. Of course, yeah. You know, so, yeah, I... I guess I don't really see it as a job, and I think that's what mean that that's what makes me kind of want to come in every day, every day and, and carry on until stupid o'clock at night. Nah, and yeah, it. it's it's class. I, I love it. I love Bro, it. I mean, as well with the like designs I've seen around, like, mm-hmm. what's the main objective with them? Uh, so um, my, the main thing I say now with the, all the branding is just yeah. to educate and motivate. So. Okay. Uh, it sounds really inspirational. I'd try not it to does sound. sound a lot. <laughs> it does. It? it sounds proper like savage. Yeah. Like I'm not trying to be like Richard Branson. Yeah, but yeah. Like all the branding is done by myself and one of my mates, Corey, yeah. who is also in St. Tyler's with us. Yeah. And we practically just sit down, usually on this sofa, and just yeah. bounce back ideas. Love each other. And then go right. Okay, yeah, that's what we kind of had in mind. It's completely changed to what the first idea was, but it's sick. You yeah. Know, that's what we're happy with. Of course. And. Yeah, so we've got different sections. So we've got like the Save the Wave collection, which mm-hmm. is um, to do with like the ocean and stuff like that. So all our stuff is recycled plastic, organic cotton, yeah. vegan, fair wear. It's all printed by hand, so there's no chemicals used, no yeah. um, plastics in the inks either, which means they don't crack and fade in the wash and that type of thing. Okay. Um, I tried to tick every box without yeah. having to shout about it, I guess. And I guess that's maybe where my downfall is, is I don't tell people as much about that side of things as maybe I should. You may, you may upsell a lot by telling people, like, yeah. because a lot of people care about that. Yeah, exactly, especially, especially, especially these days, yeah. yeah. And so, like, that collection is really about, like, the kind of ocean that is being affected hugely at the moment. Yeah. And, like, the endangered species collection is just to bring awareness to animals that don't usually get the coverage that sea turtles, dolphins, blah, yeah. blah, blah, get. Um, and yeah, we use animals that aren't necessarily the prettiest. So there's a, a fish we did, the hump head wrasse. Hump, what was that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was like that as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they're probably the ugliest fish you can find. Yeah. But they're one of like the main um, fish that help with the kind of restoration of coral reefs. Okay. So uh, they practically eat it and then, yeah. you know, get rid of it in a, in a nice way of saying it yeah. to, to make it better. Clean up like in a Exactly. Sense. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to kind of bring awareness to them because they're seriously endangered. Mm. Um, but people don't really know about them because, yeah, they don't look really nice on a T-shirt. We were like, oh. well, let's change that. Let's yeah. check her on a T-shirt and make it a laugh. Like, no, it's people, uh, Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, so that's that collection. Then we've yeah. got, like, the coordinates, which is the coordinates of the shop. Yeah. So oh. what we want to do is when we have more stores is yeah. you can collect them from each store. So that means you've got something like, say, say if you come to Cardiff yeah. and you want to buy a T-shirt to do with Cardiff, but you don't want it to have a dragon on it that Cardiff says, like, I yeah. love Cardiff or whatever, <laughs> yeah. you can get a T-shirt that's quite subtle, but it's like, oh yeah, the coordinates, that's, oh, that's that shop I went to in Cardiff in that Cardiff, time. okay. Exactly. That's a smart idea, bro. Well, it, it's just subtle, but also a memory there, yeah, I yeah. guess. Um, and then it's like, it flicks something in their brain then to think, oh, I need to check that shop out again when yeah, I go back to Cardiff. Yeah, exactly. Um, so all of the coordinate stuff is um, a heavier weight, so yeah. it's 220 GSM, the t-shirts, which means they're practically double the weight of your standard t-shirt. Yeah. So they're more like workwear type of finish. Okay. So we like to offer something to every person. So when we did a course with Big Ideas Wales, where yeah. they said, do a business plan, give us your target market, and blah, then, blah, blah. Yeah. And I was like, I don't really have a target market. And they were like, oh, your business will fail. I was like, okay, I'll stop you there for one thing. This I was one, like, yeah. if I say target market is 18 to 24, those people are the only ones that are going to feel welcome coming in. Yeah. If I have a target amount of zero years to 75 years, and, all and them hopefully all of them yeah. come in. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Exactly. And, um, and yeah, and, and that's what we kind of try to cater for. So I'll get guys coming in and ladies coming in who are in their 60s, 70s, mm. but they feel welcome staying in here and having a chat to lads who are uni students, girls who are uni students. And yeah. It just brings a whole vibe and community exactly. in there, right? And that's, yeah. what, that's what I like, you know? Like, my dad loves wearing my stuff. And then, you know, people who are practically the opposite walk of life to my dad yeah, also yeah. love wearing it, so, which is class, you know? Yeah, of course. That's Anyone what, can wear it. Exactly. That's what I want. And, yeah, so we try to just offer environmentally friendly clothes, yeah. a nice atmosphere, and a community space for people to come in it's and feel part of. Fun. Exactly. That is it in a nutshell, I guess. Yeah, yeah, of and, course. Yeah. Bro. I wanted to ask you as well, in terms of like um, expanding, mm-hmm. what's next? Uh, so we're hopefully moving soon to a bigger store. 
Um, it's actually, it's, I say bigger store, it's actually a smaller store, yeah. but a in, in a bigger space. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a better location, um, it's a better shop front, it's outside of an arcade, yeah. so you know, this is all subject to if they say yes or no to yes it. Yes or no, yeah. Um, hopefully they say yes. Yeah. Manifestable, it's a yes, yeah. it's so, happening. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's the plan, so is to find our kind of forever home in Cardiff somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then our plan then is, is, so up to this point we've done events in here once a month with different live music, okay. art exhibitions, photography exhibitions, What did like you that. do, get, get locals in here to yeah, do Yeah, so local bands and ones further afield. We have a couple yeah. from London have come down and done gigs in here and oh, stuff so. like that. And uh, up to this point we've just done three pound entry, then free alcohol and food. Yeah. So it's a reason, even if you don't like the clothes, you get a couple of free cans and pay yeah. three quid. Like, if you, can get, wrong with that, if you can get drunk in a shop and listen to music, like, because you live in the dream. That's that's true, that's true. For three pounds, that's what I'm doing it anyway, yeah. you know. So, so we want to kind of do that every day. Yeah. So, what our plan is is to run the shop nine till six and then close for an hour, open back up at seven as a bar, yeah, and then offer that space to bands to play for free Bro. because there's not many places about now that bands can play. Can't for play. Free. No, it's true, you know, because a lot, especially because of COVID as well, a lot of places have had to close, and there's a lot of a lot more musicians are coming about now because they're having more time at home to. Kind of practice what they it's want to do. It's a catch twenty two, really, isn't it? It's quite, it's quite yeah. sad for him, but at the yeah. same time, I think by you doing that, yeah, using that initiative will yeah. really help them. And as well, I get to listen to free music. Yeah, well, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. And that's I get to true. meet loads of new amazing people. That's so, true. so yeah, it's so that's the plan is to kind of um, offer that on a daily basis rather than a monthly basis. Yeah. Um, because there was a lot of people that came to the events before COVID that would never usually come in and buy anything. Yeah. But they knew that we did the events, so the they would come at every up. single event. You know, that's what they like doing. They yeah. like to come to the events, and they would buy the event T-shirt as like a memory because we would do a T-shirt to link with the event. The event. So, say course, if there was a musician course. called Hugo Cotu, he yeah. came down from London and did a gig, and he just released a new EP. So we had his EP on the back, yeah, and then a collaborative logo with us. Then, so people were like, "Oh, this is something a bit exclusive." We Different, can get this. Like, exactly. Get yeah, yeah. So that's the plan: is to do that, and then. Um, we've just got a new uh, like printing space in Lantricent where we print all the stock in house. Okay. So uh, that's where we'll be doing the full works, like from start to finish. Really. So that'll be like your factory in a sense. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It sounds that sounds mega professional. It's me usually singing my heart <laughs> out at like two in the morning, like printing yeah. a t-shirt. Yeah. And I'm not a singer, so it, it's usually lucky. <laughs> sounds that, a bit mad still. It, yeah. It's it's lucky that I am by myself because yeah. otherwise the person that'd be with me would be like, please mate, shut <laughs> up. But um, yeah, it's it's class because. It's my own space yeah. that I can kind of call my own and I can come in and out whenever I want. So say if I release a collection on a Friday, yeah. if I wanted to do it, I could leave it until Thursday evening to print it and then just print flat out. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then say if something sells out really quickly, I can shoot it there, we'll it, print yeah. it, and then it's in the next day. Um, so yeah, I try to kind of, yeah, that's... That's pretty sick, yeah. to be honest with you. It's, do you get what I mean? It's wicked. I mean, I wanted to ask you as well about the... Um, the collaboration and the models. Mm -hmm. so obviously yeah. I've seen a few of the boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. they're having the photos. I'm thinking, yeah, play, play. Yeah. Like, why did you ask the boys? Um, what made you well, ask the boys? You could have asked any any model. Yeah. But you thought. Yeah. So, uh, to be honest, yeah. the reason I ask, well, I don't. I, I guess it's not even ask. It's like, oh, are you boys free? Yeah. Should yeah. we have a couple of pints and just take some pictures? Yeah. Sound. Oh, sweet. And, and that's so organic. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I tried to make it as transparent as possible. Yeah. Because I don't want people to be like, oh, that's that brand from Cardiff that we don't yeah. know anything about the rest of it, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so the boys, like, yeah, Joel Watson, who is in St. Tyler's with us. Josh Walker does my photography, also St. Tyler's with us. Okay, yeah. Steve Mabanza. All the, yeah, all the boys, literally. Yeah, a couple of people all off of my them. foundation. So, and they're all really close mates now, which is amazing. Yeah. And I think it just makes it more natural. Like, they actually have an interest in what, what the what brand is as well. well. Like, yeah. and, and that's what I like. I like that people take an interest. Yeah. And, you know, I would do exactly the same if it was one of them doing a project. I would 100% be on board with it. And, and helping them out. Yeah, well, exactly, because they've always been there for me. Like, nah, and that's it. And it makes it so much easier then because we can go out for a couple of pints just wearing my stuff. Yeah. And then we can get pictures at the same time and that's a free that's photo true. shoot and you've had I a couple of cans like, do you know oh. what I mean? So, so yeah. It's like you link, you'd like to link fun with work. Oh yeah, I that's don't work sick. a day in my life. Do you know what I mean? It's when sad. people say, oh, you're self-employed, you never work a day in your yeah. life. It's a lie. You work every day but you absolutely love it. Yeah, because like, you're doing your work. I would never see this as a job. Yeah. I never will. You know, and th that's, I guess that's the perks of I get to employ whoever I want so I can employ my best mates. Yeah, you can do what you and want, man. I can work with whoever I want. So we get like, 
people come in and ask, oh, what's the biggest thing you've done to, to date? Yeah. And, like, we were in GQ magazine for a while and stuff oh, like that. Oh, wait so, a minute. Let's talk a, a, about while, that. It was a while ago. So it was, it was when we first opened here. So yeah. we were in there for about five months. And then from that, we were asked to be a sponsor at the Television Awards in London. Okay. So I presented the award with Stanley Johnson, Boris Johnson's dad. It was, it was It was so funny because... Obviously, he was just on I'm a Celeb, like, the, yeah. like on that year. Yeah. So I was like, when I went and met him, like, I was like, I'll meet Stanley, I'm a massive fan. And he obviously didn't have a jar of glue who I was, <laughs> was like. Yeah. And he was like, um, it's, it's as me. Mm. And I was like, ah, <laughs> like, oh, it's happening, mate. Like, What's he like? Is he all right? He's signed, yeah. yeah. So my partner was with me, he was called Charlotte. And he was yeah. like, oh, it's lovely to meet you, Charlotte. She's like, my ex-wife was called Charlotte. But he was like, don't let that put you off. <laughs> so I was like, legends, mate. I was like, you're class. But there was, there was loads of people there. Like, yeah. um, like Debbie McGee, Theo Pafitas off at Dragon's Den. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, loads of, like, people that, you know, are kind of, like, you know, fa- top famous, top like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's me, like, just... Bro. Yeah, I got dominoes, like, before going in, and I was just like, this is <laughs> How mad. How did you get yourself in there, then, so, like, in so that the, situation? They literally... So, through GQ, there's, like, a company who contact GQ and be yeah. like, oh, who's, like, um, an independent business that you want to kind of uh, shout about? Yeah. And they supposedly put me forward to oh. to this uh, company yeah and yeah it was up in london and they like paid for us to stay there for for the night and stuff like that it's pretty cool yeah oh, it was nice that's sick. but when people say oh what's your biggest achievement i don't bring that up because for me like the events and meeting loads of new people and yeah. like we've done collections with charities where uh, we've raised money up to like £3,000 for yeah. a charity called Wires in Australia. Okay, okay. So that's what's, that, what's that charity to do? Sorry. So we released that in the start of 2020 to do with the bushfires. Yeah. Um, and they work, they've worked all year round for years and years and years, but they came under obviously a lot of pressure when the bushfires happened. Yeah. So we were like, well, hopefully we can use our platform, even though it's not very big, to bring Just a to bit of awareness, awareness to like... something that's happened on the other side of the planet. Yeah. Um, and for people to be able to find an easy avenue of support and something. Yeah. And realistically, it's the 21st century. People want something in return. They do. Yeah. So if they can buy a T-shirt for £24 and we donate £12 of it, mm-hmm. if I asked anyone, oh, mate, can you donate 12 quid for this charity? They'd go, as if. They'd look and at if you I like go, do you want to buy a T-shirt for 24 quid and I donate 12 of it? Too right. Yeah, I know. You yeah, know? Yeah, and no, so we, we got to three grand and that, that was amazing. I never thought I'd get to that. And yeah. I just like to be able to do things that I would want to support yeah. or I would want to get behind. So was that one of your biggest achievements then? I'd say I'd say so, yeah. yeah I'd that's... say so. And then now we've just done one with Cardiff Dogs Home, so yeah. we're raising money for them now because they want to build the new kennels for the dogs that they have in. Okay. So, um, and that's still ongoing now, so you're still able to kind of support. And it's, and it's a collection that doesn't like, it hasn't got a dog on it and it's shouting about <laughs> saving dogs. Like, yeah. It's just a normal collection, but you're just being able to help at the same time. Okay. So so that's like what I would say my biggest achievement is. But for someone from the outside would probably look at, yo, being in GQ, that must have been that sick. Have been I but, didn't even know that, bro. That's but Because I don't really... Like, Shout out by it. For me, like, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a massive... It was really cool. Yeah. It was really cool to say I've been in it. But, and I'm not saying I, I would change that, but... Yeah. It's not why I got into what I do. Well, yeah, yeah. You, you know? got into it for a main purpose. Yeah, I, purpose. I got into to do what I like yeah. and what I have an interest in and, and kind of make a change in a way that isn't forced. Yeah. And, yeah, being GQ was cool and it, it enabled me to be, meet cool people. Like I met, like, Big Nasty and stuff. Oh, I know, Big innit? Nasty. What's was he so, like? Was he's he's right? funny as. He, oh, he showed dude. up about two hours late. It was, a, it was a black tie <laughs> event. Like, I was in a proper pucker suit and that. Yeah. He comes in in a, a BDL sweater and a pair of chinos with a bottle of champagne in his hand. And I was like, this this guy, <laughs> nasty, like, what a guy. It's so funny. But like I'm I'm a proper T V buff. Like, yeah. I love T V and that. And like those people from like I know it sounds silly, but from like Gogglebox there. Yeah. And I was like, I love you so much. <laughs> and they were like Proper fanboy in yeah, there. Yeah, big time, yeah. Oh, and, I can imagine. And they were like, oh, thanks. Like, <laughs> who is this psycho ginger kid just coming yeah. up to me and being like, I love you? <laughs> so yeah, yeah it was it was sick. cool. It was really cool. And it was nice to like network with people. So from that we worked with a few people off like Love Island okay. and stuff like that. Yeah. Which was quite fun. Um, but again, I, it, that happened quite early on, so it made me notice that that is not why I got into Why doing, you got into it, yeah. yeah. And I, I think it was good for that sense, is I then noticed straight up, right, that is practically the opposite of why I want to do what, I'm, what I want to do. Yeah. And I want to come from another angle and kind of be part of something with everyone else that's involved in the brand. Okay. You know, that and, and that's, that's, that's 
I guess, the same now, you know? Bro, you didn't want to lose yourself. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, I, it's, it's one of those things where you don't, I don't really see what I've done as, like, people come in like, oh, my God, like, you know, you're 24 and you've got a shop. And that, Bro, I'm, like, I'm impressed. But, but, but then for me, like, that was second nature. I was like, I knew I wanted a shop. And I was like, oh, that isn't yeah. a big deal. Like, yeah. I, I want a shop. I'm going to get a shop. Yeah. You know? Ha- me having a unit that is 2,400 square foot that I can print in, that was, for me, like, a big thing where everyone else would be like, that's an industrial estate unit. It's, like, yeah. flapped. Like, it's just, like, four walls, like... <laughs> But for me, you I was like, know what it is, I was like, absolutely buzzed. You can see the vision yeah. and stuff, right? Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Like when we got it, like there was, it was like knackered in there, you know. Mm. And it, like, that's what lockdown kind of helped me with. Is I had a lot of time to kit it out and get it ready to go and yeah. be able to use it, uh, which I'd never have the time for usually. Of so course, yeah, three months of being closed obviously wasn't great, but it kind of helped of, you in a sense, though, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, swings and roundabouts. You know, you got to kind of like see the problem in front of you and go right okay how can I get around it or how yeah. can I do something to keep my mind off it that's it and I think if that had, if Covid had happened a couple of years back yeah. I would have had a completely different mindset and I might not be where I am now and I think that's the thing you know with Covid because like a lot of people this year have actually started businesses or should I say last year as well yeah because of Covid 100%, you know yeah. and I find it impressive mate like loads of people are turning over big money yeah. in the space of six months but the thing is they didn't know that they had this in them. Yeah, that it had to be something. I think you know? it's, it's the thing of, I don't really look at like YouTubers much yeah. or anything, but I saw KSI said something the other day, and he was like, um, this, like he said, oh, this COVID thing, he said yeah. it's really bad, but it's actually slowed everyone down Yeah. and made them go, right, okay, why am I still in the rat race? Why am I doing For this when real? I actually wanted to do something else? It really has, yeah. You know, so 100% I agree with him on that. Like, mm. it it definitely has and it's made me notice a lot of things that I wouldn't have necessarily noticed otherwise COVID wasn't around right exactly like it's like a blessing in disguise as, as much it, as that it, sounds yeah. crazy in, in some ways yeah. yeah I think you know a lot I'm in a I guess a lucky situation that I'm not necessarily worried about my business going under yeah. because my customers are very loyal so through lockdown even though they were on furlough or whatever they're still supporting me throughout Pulling which is absolutely amazing through, yeah um, and I guess that's that comes with the territory of me being very transparent with my customers. And From being, the beginning as well, right? Yeah, being yeah. straight up like, guys, you know, the most important thing is staying safe at the moment. Yeah. We're still going to be here in a year's time when this all hopefully blows over. Yeah. Focus on getting through family, all right, blah, 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 blah. Getting good stuff, yeah. Like, I'm not going to be going, right, come on, guys, buy a T-shirt, like... <laughs> trying to force do, it down do the you know next, I mean? like, like, I'm in my house eating toasties, like, you know, <laughs> you know like, it's, it's one of those things. It's, I guess, you know, every business is different and we don't really... I say we, like me and the boys that yeah. work for me now, we don't really run it like a business because we would never want to come across like that. Yeah, of course. And that's why, yeah, on the social media, I usually have pictures of myself as well and speak as me. <laughs> and I love it. I love it, bro. I think it's proper sick. I kind of rinse myself a bit yeah. in a sense as well because I'm not a serious person, as you know. And that's always been you, though, from yeah. school. Like, you yeah. haven't changed, which yeah. is a sick thing about yeah. it. Do you know what it's, I mean? Like, you've stayed the same Liam oh, from back then. I, I try. Now, like, I try. <laughs> <laughs> try my best. Yeah, yeah try my best. It, bro. I can't lie to you. Um, bro, I want to ask you as well about that design over there. I know we probably can't see it right now. Oh, the camera. shark? Yeah, the shark. Yeah. What? So, so all of that stuff is Corey that works for me. He's, yeah. Everyone knows him customers-wise and people now know him as Murph. Murph, okay. So, so he's got a little brand to himself now. Yeah, yeah so he's Murph okay. Design. So okay. he's got an Instagram Murph Design and stuff yeah. like that. And um, when I moved here... His brother was coming in all the time because I, I, I was working in town and I got his brother a job in JD because yeah. I was working with JD. So I was spending a lot of time with his little brother and then he was coming in all the time because he'd finished his uni course. Yeah. So me and Corey have always been close. And then I said, well, do you want to start to like do your design stuff a bit more seriously That's and you like. can keep it in the shop? For free, yeah, and just have like a kind of exhibition collaboration, so, exactly. When you meet in the exactly, yeah, yeah. and yeah, so this is all his like all the sharks and the skateboards and stuff are his, and oh, um, and he's done ones for the shop, which is wicked. So, yeah, and, and that's nice. what I love because it's some if you know, if he had a brand, I would hope he would do the same for me, yeah, you know? and it's not really a big deal, it's me just I, I've got some spare space on the walls, mate, check your boards up. I completely rate that, you one, know, right? these are your friends as well, like your people, yeah, it's, it's not hard to just. No, Put no, it there. Do you know no, what I mean? no, no, like you should it's, it's a screw in the wall, like it takes go. two seconds to put it up. Like, that's it, that's it. And yeah, I guess that's the thing with, especially when I did foundation was mm. you're in, our course was in one building where you're all on the same course, yeah. all 
doing the same thing same practically thing, right? but all okay. in your own area yeah so you're bouncing off each other and got ideas off each other it was never like oh you've just taken my idea okay it was so always like oh you know how to do this oh sick i could use that and yeah. we could work together on this you know and, and that's always kind of i think stuck with me just collaborating yeah. and working together 100 to percent definitely right? yeah that's exactly weird. so and like Corey knows and all the boys know now with with the brand in itself like mm -hmm. i couldn't do it without any of them yeah you know i'm i'm a one-man band to a point but if I didn't have those boys with me doing stuff, I wouldn't be able to do the one-man band thing. Yeah. Um, and they know the future of the brand is with them, you know, mm -hmm. is them being part of it. So, yeah, it's um, 100% a community thing as in customers coming into us yeah. and the people that work. It's more of like a, a family, I guess. Because like, we did a Christmas, well, we went out for like Christmas do type of thing. Yeah. Not last, obviously not COVID, you had the one before. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we just went out for food and it was practically just us boys just going out just and having a drink, like. and drink like. and we went to the Dead Canary down by Grazing Shed yeah being there with the oh class mate it's, so, it's a speakeasy so you've yeah. got to press a buzzer to go in okay then it's sick mate it's proper cool it's worth having a look oh, it's wicked yeah, I mean, so, and it's, it's proper cool like cocktails yeah. and everything and the boys were like oh you don't have to get us drinks so I was like yeah I was like you guys have helped me out you're like, my team bro like, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and you know it's that's that's what I want at the end of the day. I want them to know that I appreciate the work they do for me. Yeah. And I'm not just the next manager. That's like, I, well, it sounds funny. I'm not a manager, am I really? Like, no, my mates work for me. Like, like, yeah, no, but I'm, and I'm like, my mates work for me. Like, yeah. it, they don't work for me. They're, they're in the shop with you're me. You're a team, you're friends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 they're yeah, they're yeah. me, practically. So, yeah, it's sick. Because I know then if I say I want to do this type of design, they'll mm. straight up say, nah, mate, that'll be dead. Dead, yeah. yeah you know, they'll be real with you, Yeah, yeah 100%. Cool, right? which yeah. We're, we're the same with each other. So, yeah, so. That's the kind of nice thing about it is I, I get to kind of give people that kind of space. That kind of and space and stuff. Upstairs in the shop in our like stockroom area, yeah. there is like a balcony section above the stairs which I wasn't using. And Archie, one of my mates um, who has moved to Cardiff, yeah. uh, he's a photographer and is filming and stuff like okay. that. And I said to him, I was like, have you got a studio? And he was like, nah. And I was like, do you want to just have that space upstairs? Oh. But it was a space I didn't use, so yeah. I was like buzzing. And he he really enjoyed building it and setting it up. And now he, he's up there a couple of days a week, exactly. like which is wicked because then we bounce off ideas while he's yeah, working, while I'm working, you know. And you can collaborate as well. Yeah, hundred percent. So it's yeah, it's an, it's a nice space to be able to work in. Nah, that's pretty sick, bro. Yeah, have it's you, great. Fun. You had any failures, bro? I mean, um, kind of all run so smoothly. Oh Surely. yeah, hundred percent. Like, um, I, I guess. It's one of those things where you try to forget the failures. <laughs> I'm sorry, let's bring no, it back No, no, it's cool, it's cool man. Yeah, I'll, I'll cry after, it's fine. <laughs> um, no, like, so when we first opened, yeah. we did a collection called Another Day at the Office. Okay. And it was a really cool logo, but everyone was like, oh, you should do that logo, it's sick. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really like, I didn't like it that much, but I was you like, oh, people it. keep telling me it's cool, like, I'll do it. Like, yeah. yeah, it'd be sick. Um, and I released it, and it, it just didn't do very well. But I think it's because my heart wasn't in it. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like probably one of the only collections where I wasn't motivated to speak to people about it and show people. You and I, and I wasn't wearing it. I was yeah. just like, it's just there. Um, and yeah, I'd say I'm trying to think. It sounds really bad me saying I'm trying to think of a oh, failure now, but it's, time, it's I, right. I guess with how I do things. Yeah. I don't think about something enough to worry if it's going to fail. Okay. So, if it fails, I'm like, oh, that's all right. Don't go matter. again. Yeah. Just go again. Simple yeah. as that. Because you're like in-house like for everything anyway, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, like, the, the way I looked at it from the start was in university, you know, you, especially with an art course, um, if I went on to do graphics or whatever, yeah. I would have done three years and got 15 grand debt to then not have a job at the end. Bro. And I was like, right, okay, if I have a shop for three years and come up with 15 grand a day, I've had a shop for three years. For three years, yeah. So that's a pretty good TV to take to, to take anyway. into I should, yeah, get, I should get a job in spa shop for that or petrol station. <laughs> at least, yeah. Exactly. At the very least. So yeah. I've always been very much like, not laid back with it because I am quite hard on myself and I do push myself more than I probably should sometimes. Yeah. And don't give myself a break. But <clears throat> at the same time, yeah, I don't really think too much into it. And I think that's been kind of the thing from the offset is I enjoy every minute of it yeah. in the parts like doing my tax return I actually enjoy doing that because so you, it's, you do that on your own yeah, yeah well Bro. end of the day if you got to pay someone to do it obviously yeah. that person knows how to do it I can learn what they do that's true that's, like, that's true you get, taught, you, you, get, you get taught how to do stuff I was like right okay YouTube's a really good thing now yes, you can yes. practically search anything on there and yes. find out Google. how to do it oh, mate. the only thing that I, I looked at on YouTube to do and I 
didn't have a driver clue how to yeah. do it after was Illustrator. I oh. <laughs> can't touch that with a barge pole. Yeah, Still, Illustrator's tough, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm a photo I've tried it myself. Photoshop, yeah. I'm okay with. Illustrator, mm. I'm more like biro and a piece of paper. Yeah, a bit old, a bit old school with it, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I'd say, um, yeah, failures. Um, Any I'm, tribulations? I mean, it doesn't even have to be failures, like just things which may have, you know, like set her- you back a little bit, that. hurdles, you know? Um, people take me seriously. Okay, let's that's talk the about ma- That's the main one. Yeah? Yeah, oh, it's still a problem now. What, people don't take you serious? Yeah, because I'm a bit of a pillock. Okay. Just because I don't, I, I joke around a bit. And yeah. that's because I'm only being myself. Yeah. Like, if I was in a shirt and tie now doing this. I don't know. Take you serious. In it. I wouldn't take you serious. Yeah, you but because I mean? you know me. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, instead true. of you knowing me as, oh, that shop owner. Yeah. Like, um, like when I've, you know, getting contracts for units and stuff like that and mm. shops, people are like, as if, look at me as if like, oh, he's forgot to bring his dad with him. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> who's this young kid? Yeah, who's this child <laughs> that's just walked in here? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I do get that a lot. And How does that make you feel though when you like overcome it a little bit? Like, to be honest, oh, mate, I, if, they, if they're like, it's not speaking down to me, but yeah. if they're undermining me or whatever, I'm like, that, that's fine. Like It's happened to me since day dot really. Day dot so, and stuff, yeah. So I don't really mind. Fit. Especially in the art world, it's, yeah. it's all opinion. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you could come in and go, yeah, your designs are cool, but I actually hate them. Yeah. Because I wouldn't wear that. Well, that's fine. No problem. Like, you, yeah. It's your you opinion. Don't, yeah, it sounds like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. cool. Like, you know, I'm not going to cry about it. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I think the one thing is, is that is always, I think, going to um, be a kind of, uh, my Achilles heel. Yeah. Is that I act quite unprofessional in a way. Yeah. Or... Um, it's always been an age thing. Obviously, that's not always going to be a problem because I am going to get older. There's I most people so, do. Anyway. Yeah, fingers crossed. You know. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. So like when I first started, you know, I started the brand when I was 19. Mm. So people were like, oh, it's, it's just really young to start as well, bro. Yeah. Play. I did. I well, I didn't want to do anything else. Yeah. So you knew what you was, wanted to do. Just like this. I'll, I'll just do it. And yeah. If it works, it works. You know. And I, I think I would never have let myself not enable it to work. Yeah. And I did a. Now I do talks with Big Ideas Wales. I had to go on a course to do with that. Yeah. And um, it was only like a day course of like ticking boxes, really. Yeah. And um, saying like how to do a talk and that type of thing. Okay. And there was a bit in it where like a uh, team bonding, you know, you get to know the other people there. And they were like, oh, so if you could just put in how many hours you work on average a week. Yeah. And uh, the type of trade you're in, blah, 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 blah. And it was me and I was the youngest by about 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> and they've asked me before to do talks. And yeah, I, yeah. Like how to run a business. And I've always been like... I don't really think that it's feasible for me to really tell people how to run a business run a because business just, yeah. I know how to do my own yeah. to a point, but I'm still learning new things every single day. And I didn't really think it was feasible for me to go in and lecture to people who are practically in the same boat as I am yeah. now. You should do this. You should do that. You didn't feel how... like you had, you could intrude Ex- no, exactly. in, uh, yeah, so, syndrome or yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we had to put in, it's just a slip of paper, just like write how many hours you did in your, your trade. Yeah. And this was when we didn't know anything about each other that was in this uh, training course. And there yeah. was about five or six of us. And so I put retail and I average work probably 60 to 70 hours a week. Okay. And Boy. there was everyone else that was there looked a lot more perfect. I showed up probably in an outfit similar to this mm. in my van with flashing lights on the roof because it's an ex um, council like maintenance van yeah you know <laughs> that's the thing that people don't take me very seriously about you know and everyone else is like the one lad he worked for Lloyd's Bank in the past so he was very smartly dressed like yeah. I can dress smart if I want to but yeah. I'm not going to pretend to be something I'm not um, that'd be worse and then we had to guess what so they were all put into a hat then and we had to pick one out and it would say the job roles to say if it, someone was a dog groomer and then the hours you had to yeah. guess who was the dog groomer. Okay, brother. right, yeah. And it came the first one that came up was mine. And I was like, oh class, like no one's gonna no one's gonna get this, are they? Yeah. So I was like, right, okay, let's see how this goes. Mm. And um they came to me and obviously I had to like bluff it. I had to pretend to be That's someone else. Like, yeah. I, I was like, oh, I think I think it's you. And then they were all pointing to another person mm. who was practically the polar opposite of me. Well, we get suits. Yeah, like smart, you know, yeah, smart dress, sense, you know, yeah. like brand new haircut yeah. and that. like my dad cuts my hair like so <laughs> like it's not the sharpest of haircuts yeah. at the rest of the times yeah and uh then the the woman who was do, running the like the training day was yeah. like oh the, the name on the back is uh, Liam could Liam put his hand up and I was like hey. and, they, and, they were, and they were all like 
you do 70 hours? And they're like, <laughs> in retail, how is that possible? And I'm like, ah, oh, right, okay, so I get the stock in, I print the stock, every single T-shirt one by one by yeah. hand, yeah. then I put it out into the shop floor, I build all the units in the shop, I run the shop nine to five, and then they're like, oh, we never thought someone like you could do that. And I was like, How that make you feel, though? I was like, class. I, yeah. I, I was like, thank you. I yeah. was like, much appreciated. <laughs> like, lovely kind words there. Eh? You know, so, yeah, mate, to be honest, like, from That's the start, mad. from the start, I guess people judge a book by its cover. Yeah, and you know, whatever. Like, I think that's kind of built your character as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah definitely. Kind of, for me, that would probably boost my ego. Like, yeah, that's that's me. Yeah, yeah I do ninety hours a week. Yeah, you know like, what I mean? to be honest, like when they said, "Oh, they, oh how do you do that many?" I'm like, "Well, to be honest, I don't really see it as work, so I don't yeah. really mind." It don't make sense you know, to me. It's like, not work. I'm having fun with the boys. We're yeah, here, we're fixing things up. Yeah, like you know I would mean? never say, "Oh." got a nine to five job yeah like because i don't work nine to five anyway but i would never feel like i've got a job yeah, like yeah, i don't yeah. have a job like i i literally wake Just up, pull up here. <laughs> i have two pieces of toast and a glass of milk before i leave the house <laughs> i come in and then i'm like right okay what should i do today should i yeah. should i remerge the front of the shop yeah i'll do that should i print some bags yeah i'll print some bags like i think that's great though that's giving you a lot of freedom no yeah 100%. yeah because you can i guess because i've come from something like scott's where you know it's very much you have to do what your manager says, which is, you yeah. know, JD, a very good company to work for, mm -hmm. but also you work for very little money um, and it's very different retail to what I do. And I yeah. I guess it was the best thing I could have done because they showed me how to not do retail. No, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, people say, oh, you know, retail as a whole is going away from shops itself. Yeah, onto if, online and e-commerce, right? Exactly. Yeah. And if I didn't have a physical store, I would not be self-employed. No? No. Nah. 90% of my sales are in store. In store, yeah, because you like and to have the chat, the community, it, the yeah. vibe. I, I, I can speak to the cows come on. So, yeah, like, customers yeah. come in, and if they want to be in or not, they're in here all day, <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> Don't mind, um, pull up. But it's, it's that thing of, I wouldn't really class myself as retail. Yeah. It's a space where I'm practically doing my art exhibition five years after doing my first one, Stop. and people can buy them yeah. to wear. That's literally it. That's and sick. it's Yeah, it's cool, and I guess... The things I learned from Scott's was keeping the shop clean, tidy, yeah. customers always first. But the things they also taught me was to upsell, push a sale, blah, 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 blah. That's, that's not you. Nah, no. I, I can't do that. Like Push a conversation instead. Yeah, I just ask them how the weather is. And yeah. usually in Cardiff, that's a good conversation starter because you never know what it's doing outside. So, it's true, bro. And from that's inside an arcade, I can never have a jar of glue what's going on anyway. So Nah, that's true. So yeah, I'd say on the kind of thing of what's been my like hurdles I'd yeah. say people take me seriously and kind of the age thing okay so yeah I mean okay that's pretty sick bro um, I'm gonna ask you as all well, what does the seed system mean to you if I said seed system the seed system mm. first of all it's the name of the podcast let's okay. not forget that yeah but what does it mean to you when I say the seed system the seed system mm. there's no right or wrong answers Whatever I would seen. say planting the seed for someone else. Okay. So, like, I guess when you're chatting to someone about something, I could be chatting to you about anything now. I could say, yeah. oh, yeah, my van, I've just kitted out with chipboard in the back. Yeah. That could spark an idea in you to do something completely different. What? And it's planted that seed. That seed in my, okay. I guess. Okay. okay. Yeah? Yeah, but bro, there's no wrong or right answers, you know? Yeah. That's a good answer. I guess straight, see, <laughs> so you've noticed the difference in me when I'm asked something that I have no clue about. Yes, I have. And, and <laughs> then I just turn into some sort of tortoise and go inside a shell, <laughs> where if someone said, how do you print a t-shirt? Okay, how long have you got? Let's go. You know? How long yeah. do you, how, how yeah. do you print the t-shirt? When, when you ask me a question where I'm like, right, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I haven't been asked a question since I left sixth form and I haven't gone to uni <laughs> yeah, for yeah, a reason. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> no, I haven't. But okay, no. Let's get let's get into it. How do you print the tops? Um, okay, so like, what's the process? Um, right. So you've got like, say, I wanted to do, um, say, just this overseas apparel now. Yeah. So I'd choose obviously the font or whatever. Print it off on a normal like HP printer or Canon printer. Yeah. You know, there's other printers available if you wanted a different one. But <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like you just then print it off onto a thing that's like film work. It's practically. A single use of poly pocket yeah it's just a piece of plastic that you print onto um, and then you have a screen which is made of mesh with like a it's like a picture frame with yeah. mesh in it um, then you put like an emulsion which is uh, it blocks out all the holes in the mesh yeah 
Um, that you're probably like, what are you on about, right? Bro, now? I am thinking it. I mean, I, I had a clothing line once back in the day, bro. Like, yeah. I don't know if you remember, like, yeah, RJX, yeah. remember? Yeah, yeah. But I, I used to just ask people, yo, can you, can you print that for yeah. me? I never actually did. Yeah, so, so, so like, there's loads of different ways of printing. You've got yeah. vinyl printing, which is like heat transfer type of thing. Yeah. You've got DTG, which is digital printing. Then you've got screen printing, which is what I do. Yeah. And screen printing, it means that I can't just press go and then it prints 20 t-shirts. Yeah. I have to pick up each individual t-shirt, line it up on a board, pull the screen down with the design on it and print that one with ink, push the ink through the screen, yeah. lift it up if it looks good enough, sound, I can take the t-shirt off, put it through a tunnel dryer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, how the screen works, you put emulsion on it, then I put the film work with the writing on it or whatever, the logo, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Then you expose it under UV light for however many minutes is right for that detail. Yeah. So it's usually about four minutes for the stuff I do. Okay. And then uh, you pressure wash the design out. So then all it leaves then is like a purple emulsion on the screen and then the writing or brand or Which whatever. Then, yeah. And then you've got that screen as long as you kind of keep it strong. Okay. You know, as long as you don't pressure wash it at like 100 miles So it can be recycled? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so I've had screens set up for two years, three years, and okay. like I chop and change my designs quite a lot. So they're usually like my original logo, which I'm yeah. always going to have. Um, and yeah, so then it means... I've got a, a forehead carousel, so it's kind of like a big circle like that, and then yeah. you've got arms come off it, it looks a bit like a spider, yeah. and then you put the t-shirt on a board that's in the shape of like a, a square practically, and then you always have to have like a little snap, so it's like the screen bounces off the t-shirt, Okay. so there's a chance for when you push the ink through, it bounces off so it doesn't stick to the t-shirt and bleed, okay. and the logo doesn't mess up and yeah. stuff like that. Um, it's quite an intricate way Did of printing. Did you have to teach yourself this? So I learned on foundation how to print onto cloth, Yeah. which was fine but yeah. they showed me how to do it in a really basic way okay. so I was like sick I can do this on t-shirts and I did it and it was terrible <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I have learned kind of on the job and it's one of those things like when I first started I would print for two hours and I'd print about 30 t-shirts where yeah. now if I printed for two hours I could probably print 200 t-shirts so it comes with time yeah. you know it's same as anything An you know experience, exactly course, yeah. yeah so um yeah, so it's, it's nice to be able to kind of have a full control over what the garment looks like, what the print looks like, yeah. how it goes on, the kind of placement of the design, everything, the size of the design. The yeah, I do it literally from start to finish. So it means when a customer asks me, asks me a question, yeah. that's like I was saying when you asked me a question I didn't know about. I, you know I, about it, they yeah, really ask you. Like I fell out my ass type yeah. thing when you asked me, yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. But if someone said, oh, I how does this design wash? I'll be like, right, okay, just wash it on a standard wash and yeah. it'll last forever, you know? Because I know exactly how it works because I wear it all the time, I print it. I'm kind of practically the, the guinea pig of you my own product. Like, you know, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, and then a two color print, you just line up two screens with one color. So say if I have a design where it's a mountain with blue sky behind it, and yeah. the mountain's black, I print the blue first, then overlap the black on top and stuff like that. So it just gets more complex as you do more colors or designs. Yeah. Um, but you know, I've got about 25 different screens with all my different designs on them. So and it means- just, Or they're just recycled. Yeah, and you know exactly. Yeah, so it means that I've got them forever. And they're aluminium, so it means that the frame of them is always gonna be sturdy, so they're yeah. never gonna kind of like fall apart on me. Um, and yeah, so, and then we have a tunnel dryer that we put all our garments through, which evaporates all the water out of the design, mm -hmm. which means then that when you wash it, it's not going to crack and fade. And it'll all be all right when it comes back out. Like exactly, that. because I hate when I buy stuff that cracks and fades. Mm -hmm. It's so annoying. Um, I know, trust me. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's why I do that, because I'd never want my customers to be like, oh, like I bought this T-shirt two it's weeks ago. It's cracked and faded already. Cracked and faded. Like, yeah, there's only one O left on the thing. It's just got SA on the back of it. Like I'd hate that. You know, yeah, I, of I course, would take man. It, I would take it personally. Personally, yeah, you yeah. paid for that, though. Exactly. Like, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, yeah and, and yeah, so that's kind of the process of how I do things, I guess, okay. uh, in a simple way. Like, There's loads of stuff on, on my Instagram and website that shows the, the like process as well. Like, There's little clips of me doing it, so you'll have to see my mug for a little bit longer. Yeah, like, yeah. But um, if you have an interest in that sort of things, I guess Let's check it out you can have, like, have a little yeah. look. Like, yeah. I'm going to ask you as well, what does the name mean, bro? Where, does the, where did overseas <laughs> come from? So, um, Were you overseas when you made it? No, no I wasn't. Dead no, dead no. Dead no. Dead do you know where I was? I was, in, <laughs> I was in B Block. In, ke in chemistry no with, with Miss Robson go on yeah and go uh, on. probably shouldn't say that as 
like when I do talks in schools, like I usually do bring that up and everyone yeah. laughs, but then also I see the teacher in the corner of my eye like frowning, like why are you saying that? Yeah, but like, <laughs> I've got to be honest. I no, be you honest. have to be honest though, yeah, yeah transparency, and, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And yeah, like I enjoyed doing the chemistry stuff where you like get the Bunsen burner out and you burn a packet of crisps and see which one yeah. burns best, but <laughs> when you have to like do formulas and that, I was like, oh, this ain't my cup of tea. All got a bit and uh, I just, just used to just draw logos. And uh, names and overseas power was one of them. So I, I've got in my house about two poly pockets full of just like names and designs yeah. and logo and branding ideas. And I just chose overseas apparel as, as the one to use, really. And then, so I had the name, but I didn't have a logo to go with it. Yeah. And I was like, well, I've got proper, get something sick now, you know, yeah. smash this. And then um, on foundation, I was there, like, I think I was thinking about it too much. And, um, I was then on my lunch break. I was doing those designs and they were just rubbish. They weren't, nothing was clicking. We were feeling you know? the luck, yeah. Exactly. And uh, I wanted something that was kind of like the Nike tick or the Adidas stripes where people will notice it, but it won't be like, oh, they're copying one of those. Yeah. I've always wanted to be my own thing. Individually. Not be like, yeah. oh, that reminds me of Quicksilver or Billabong or whatever. Yeah. I want to be, that is OSA. That reminds me of OSA, OSA like, you yeah. know? So yeah, for ages I was like, right, I'll just kind of try to work out how to like come up with an idea that will be eye-catching but I've also got versatility yeah so it means that two years down the line if I want to still have the wave logo I could do it in a more minimal way okay type of thing yeah and uh I was on my lunch break then because I was so like kind of caught up in trying to come up with a cool design yeah there's there's a place opposite my foundation course called Baghetti Junction and you'd go there every day and I would always just get like a tuna panini yeah with like a bit of cheese in it. absolutely banging yeah I'd check it out um and I was I drew around a plate so it was a perfect circle. Yeah. That was kind of, that's how I do my art really is as kind of home safe as possible. Spiral, Easy. plate, yeah. paper, done. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I drew around a circle so I knew I had that as like the basic shape. Yeah. And then drew just like a wave over a city and put some lines in it and put OSA in it. And, uh, and I was like, well, that's, that's pretty cool. And like, while I was eating my lunch, mm. so like, I've still got the original drawing. It's got yeah. like, blotches of tuna melt stains <laughs> on it and so yeah i think it's organic it, though yeah yeah exactly and i think that's kind of come through since then is all of our designs now are kind of a natural process rather than trying to force something yeah yeah and yeah i, I guess i was lucky in the sense that i learned that straight away yeah is yeah. that i can't force it you know you and just take time and do yeah it. so o- overseas power really is i fell into having that name yeah because i had the idea in school and but I had loads of other ones, so I could have picked someone else, and it could have not worked. Any other names me. which you can dash out? <coughs> um, so I had been? one that was ACO, so it standard for okay. a cup of, and then the logo would be like a different mug or cup or something like that, oh. and then we'd have a bar where it'd be called a cup of, and then you'd choose your drink or whatever. So you can't, you thought of like division, bro? Yeah, like years. I, I guess, yeah, I guess so. For the years, I, I guess like, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Without noticing. Yeah. I guess Subconsciously I, just doing it. I guess I just have such like a kind of creative aspect to what I, I kind of have an interest in. Yeah. I don't just go, oh yeah, that's a cool word. I'll do that. It's more, yeah. yeah, how could that be a brand? How could that look on the back of a t-shirt? How could it look as a full shop? How would it look on a shop front? I think that's the you greatest know? thing about these days as well. Like creatives are getting a bit more, um, how can I say it? A bit more recognition. Yeah. Exactly. Um, whereas back in the day, it's like, what? You do art? Or, yeah, you, or you're creative. You'd be, you'd be classed as a bum. Do you know what? Essentially yeah. a bum, yeah. isn't it? But yeah, now exactly. it's like, whoa, you're creative. Oh my days, yeah. can you help me? Or can you get yeah. involved? Or can exactly. you know? It's sick. So, like, yeah, I think I fell into really having the name of Overseas Apparel. And yeah. Now, like, it just comes through and everything that it's just things I have an interest in. So, yeah. outdoors, environment, clothing itself, um, minimal designs, but then also kind of like, quite eye-catching logos as well yeah. so yeah I, I guess as I'm my own boss I can really do whatever do I want, what you want. but yeah. it's always in kind of link to everything else because that's always what I'd want to wear like, you yeah know, you know do, like yeah I at the start I think I planned ahead a lot to where I'd like to go with it and all that type of thing yeah and now I don't really you just like because oh, I'm like go with the flow right? yeah exactly yeah. and yeah, I'd like in a couple of years' time to have a couple of other stores, but mm. I'm not really, like, giving myself a time frame for that or say, oh, yeah, I could do it then, yeah. I'll do just this. just take time with it and see yeah. what happens, right? And, yeah, for, for me, like, as, as a brand, I think that is 
kind of the be all and end all is I'm always just going to do what I like and yeah. I, I guess that's what the brand stands for is is me the brand yeah. is me is you yeah and as silly as that sounds like I doubt Adidas says that but you know so the things that you are liking and involved in and wanting to do anyway yeah. right so exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. and you. and yeah it's, it's always going to be the same I'll, I'll never change that and I'll, I'll stick to that till till the end game you know mm. that's that's it's not like I'm feeling right okay I've got a do this certain design because yeah, it fits in with the rest of the shop. It's if I want to do that design, I feel like there's still an underlying overseas apparel vibe to it. Yeah, without us even noticing. So mm -hmm. so yeah. So I, I guess that's Bro, that's the brand. That's sick. Where can people find you? <coughs> like socials and everything else. Yeah. So we our overseas apparel Instagram is just over underscore seas underscore apparel. Yeah. Uh, the website's overseasapparel.com. Yep. Um, we're in Queen's Arcade and kind of city centre. Pull up, guys. Um, postcode CF10-2BY. <laughs> I remember that now, like this, my own house yeah. postcode. CF10-2BY, yeah. Um, and then that's also a good thing with the coordinates collection is once you're in, you can see the coordinates. So then if you ever get lost, put in our coordinates. You just know again. where you are. Yeah, that's and then you can just chat to me for hours. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I guess with, uh, with all that, we make it as easy as possible yeah. because I'm terrible on technology. So as long as I can find it, I think it should be Everyone all right. Be able to find yeah, it. if I can find my own website, I'm like sound. Yeah, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Nah, that's it, bro. Wow, it's been a pleasure, man. I'm yeah, a pleasure, man. You know I mean? Yeah, bro, it has so. been a pleasure. Yeah, I think I think we're good, y'all. Do you know what I'm saying? I Amazing.